I had to become a Muslim and I had to tell the truth and I had to admit there could only be one God. Not two, not three. And God can forgive sin if he wants to. And he doesn't need to kill somebody else to get it done. In fact, I had to be responsible for my own sins. And that's the hardest part about changing out of Christianity to Islam is to come to grips with the fact that you have to stand up and pay for what you did. You can't charge it to somebody else's American Express card. So that was it for me. I knew I had to go in. So I went in and I made a bath and I came downstairs and I was ready. And I stood there in front of my friend from Egypt and the brand new Muslim ex-priest and I said these words Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad rasulullah A few minutes later here came my wife right behind me said the same thing Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad rasulullah Without giving you the whole story tonight I will tell you some weeks and months went by but my father also said the same thing Ashhadu la ilaha illallah and just before she died, my stepmother said, I've been listening to you guys for all these years, and I know that Jesus can't be a God or a son of a God. There can only be one God. Muhammad's his messenger. Allahu Akbar. She died a few months after that. Alhamdulillah. At the age of about 86. Amazing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing how Allah works? Yesterday we gave shahada to a man 63 years old. This year, in the spring of this year, we gave shahada to a woman who was 99. And all of her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, alhamdulillah, are Muslim. All of them, alhamdulillah, all Americans, by the way. It's amazing, isn't it? I've seen so many people enter Islam and every time they do, I cry. I cry and they cry and it feels good to know that there is this Rahma from Allah that he will bring even the priests and the preachers of other religions to Islam. Did you know that people who are pundits from the Indian religion of Hinduism, I've seen them come in Islam. Yes. Have you heard of the Brahmin caste of the Hindus? The one who is making so much money selling CDs for Bollywood from India. A woman named, uh, I think her name was, uh, they used to call her Sharman or something like that. She had this big company doing millions of CDs for Bollywood. She had a dream one night. A vision, she said it was like being wide awake. I was in a store, she said, and I was looking at a book, and there was a special book in this store, and I knew I had to buy this book. If I ever see this book, I have to buy it. Her driver had taken her to some store. She was going to go in to do something. She realized this is the store, and this is the book. There it is. She started screaming, this is a book of my dream. I have to buy it. The vendor there said, well, then buy it. So she bought it and went home and read it. Guess what the book was? You're right. Translation of Quran. She said, because this is from my dream, I'm going to read it. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to accept it. And she did. She became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. By the way, her driver had been driving for her for over seven years. Then all of a sudden, she found out he was Muslim. He never told her. She never knew. She thought he was a Hindu. The one who sold her the book was a Muslim. Didn't tell her that she was buying Quran, just said, give me the money. <laughs> Imagine that. I'm wondering how many opportunities we miss every day. Because that lady came up to me as a brand new Muslim and she said to me, I would like to take one of your tapes and make CDs out of it. I said, go ahead and have a good time. She did. She's made over 600,000 of them and distributed all over the United States. Many people came to Islam. Maybe some of you know about that because of her effort, not mine. We've done 
hundreds of thousands of these CDs, and we see the result of it all the time. But you know something? You, you don't have to just sit here and listen to the story. You can be part of this story. It's real easy. You can go to our website, islamtomorrow.com. Our other website with the CDs are right there for you, free. I don't know if anybody else came and offered you something for free. Maybe they did. But the website's there and it's free. You go to islamyesterday.com and download as many as those CDs as you'd like. Make copies of them and give them out to all the people. And let's find out how many more people will hear this message and say, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. I'll give you a little free entertainment. <clears throat> it goes something like this. Uh, you know, I was in Saudi Arabia recently, and I found, you know, everybody's very style conscious. I don't know why, but, you know, we think about Muslims should be like, the last thing in your mind is worrying about how your clothes look and things like that, but people of the Gulf, they're just like everybody else. They want to look nice, show off, and so that's why I'm wearing this outfit tonight. This bisht, as they call it, you see it, how it fits like this? Now I'm going to take this off and show you. Watch closely. See this? This is called what? Huh? Ghutra? Now you can put the eagle, and this is real classy. But for the poor guy, he doesn't have eagle. He can just go like this. Huh? Huh? It's good? He can also wrap around with it like this. Is that good? <laughs> like it? Thank you. I got excited, huh? Okay, now, see this? Looks good, huh? It's talent, man. But then what about the, the kids? They don't want to, that's old man stuff. So the kids said, you know what, Dad? Just let me have one of these. <laughs> and when it's time for Salah, Cheesy. Mafi Mushkila. Right? That's funny, huh? By the way, that's why I wore this all night long. I was getting tired of wearing this anyway. We flew in here today from Melbourne, and I guarantee you I didn't wear this on the airplane. <laughs> But tomorrow, inshallah, when I leave, I can imagine if I put all this stuff on and that and get in the airplane, right? Every time I sneeze, they're going to go, oh. <laughs> I know it's bad. Muslims shouldn't do it. But I've always had this idea. What if you had a briefcase, just leave it in the airport and go, what's that? <laughs> That'd be all right, I'll tell you. Well, I've had a lot of fun here in the land down under. I got to tell you that it's been a lot of fun. As we say, it's been a real hoot. And, uh, <laughs> no worries. Good day, mate. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One Islam Productions, an Islamic film studio established in Australia, is dedicated to producing films for all Muslims. Just some of the films by One Islam Productions. Children's programs, Islam for Me, We Remember Allah, Storytime and more. Educational films, 
pray as you have seen me pray. Words, Ramadan, renewal of faith. Documentaries. We at One Islam Productions believe that Islam is precious and deserves to be presented in only the highest quality. Visit us at www.oneislam.net for more information. One Islam Productions, a film production company run by Muslims for Muslims. Um, I mean, from the whole uh, video, I, I just the one thing that I got is just the uh, moving from it's it's a it's a matter of choice and finding peace. So it's moving from where you were before to Islam, where um, he has. He has just expounded and explained his story of how, you know, he turned Muslim and also his family turned Muslim. And I mean, the rest of other people also followed. I mean, we are in a, a place and era and time where things are changing, you know. You, you find the truth and you opt to, you know, uh, stick to that. and. Uh, a lot of people are moving to Islam because they find that this is where I belong, understand this is where peace is, uh, which is a good thing. I mean, if you get into any religion and you find that this is where your peace is, no one has a right to tell you that you're in the wrong place or something like that, you get it. So, I mean, it's a good story from his perspective. Personally, I feel like... Um, it's, it's 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 someone's choice you know one day you can wake up and say like you're touched you feel like hey you know what let me go and become a christian or a buddhist or an islam um which is something that no one has to force you to be or no one has to uh tell you like you have to be this if you don't be this you're gonna die or you're gonna go to hell or something like that you know nobody knows until that last moment when um we uh, cease to live on this earth or something like that you get my point so now the thing is uh i will i respect all religions and i respect that um islam's they stuck to their uh, i mean if not the majority i mean most of them stick to their what do you call this uh, i don't want to say craft they stick to their religious um, pattern you get it I mean they have to pray five times a day you have to go to the mosque every Friday you know I mean it's too much if you ask me it's too much for praying five times a day I mean if you ask me it's, it's too much but these people go further to do so which I feel it's something that I mean if you look at it in a very uh, positive way it's um, it's it's a uh, it's commendable. You understand? I mean, it's something that I would want to be part of. That if 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 I can be able to pray five times a day, five times a day, and make sure that uh, you know I I I take just two or three minutes, maybe in intervals, in a day or something like that, and make sure that I pray five times. You know, I mean, that would be a, such an amazing thing to do. But because that not every religion have to do the way Muslims do things, other religions, they pray maybe in the morning. I don't know how they do it. Okay, as a Christian, you can pray anytime. But Sundays is, the, the Sunday, the Saturday, where is our, you know, actual, is it day to go to, to pray? I mean, in churches or something like that. But they meet on other days as well. Yes, they also meet on Wednesdays, you understand? Yeah, for Bible study. Yeah, Bible studies and all those kind of things. But I don't think in Christianity is that kind of... Um, is it a law? I think what you're trying to say is um, uh, this religion is going to hold you accountable for what you do. Yes. If you don't do this, you know this is wrong. Yeah, you understand. Not whereby you're in a religion where you're like, ah, 
you don't care. And I think they made it so perfect in a way that you find everyone following it. You get my point, which is, it's, it's, I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, good for those who are turning to Islam and, yeah, converting to Islam. And for those who are still in their religion, they find that this is where they, it's peace, good for you. I mean, no one should force you to do anything. But according to, this is a very really nice video and it's really self-explanatory. It's just a priest and preachers entering Islam, you know. And uh, we can attest to that. A lot of people are changing. Yeah. What do you think? I was actually going to say some of the things that you've already said. I was going to talk about peace. It's all about finding peace and you choosing what path you want to follow in life. But what's amazing about this video is the fact that um, Yusuf uh, talks about his experience, yeah. making it a normal thing whereby you find yourself unsure, even though you really want to learn about something. At the end of the day, I feel like it's also good to come from a household that um, believes in the same thing. Because then I guess you have something in common, you get to learn at the same time or not. It depends on where you're coming from. Like I said, you said everything else. Love the video. Yeah. And also, what do you think about marriage aspect? Do you think that um, like we should marry each other regardless? God, um, despite the fact you're Muslim or Christian or something like that? I don't think there should be any limit. But then if you're going to marry someone that's, all, that's going to tell you what you believe in is wrong, then don't be with that person. Instead of you making someone feel like what they believe in is wrong, why don't you go for someone that believes in the same thing that you do? Yeah, so... And you saw? Yeah, I mean, I would say the same thing. If you tend to go to the other side of marry maybe a Christian or something, then let it be even. Let it not be, ah, your religion is that, your religion is this. You see, I think the, this is where you find more peace with someone who is of the same religion, I think. You can still yeah. have peace with someone from a different religion. Just respect what they believe, respect what you believe. Yes, I'm saying, yeah, I mean, of course you can have peace, but again now, where, it's not a problem, where there's going to be a slight problem when now you're raising those children, do you understand? Where is the kid go? I mean, look at it, okay, I'm Muslim, you're Christian, there's a young kid over here. Mm -hmm. Yes, so how are we going to raise that kid? How would you want to raise that kid? I've asked you a question. How are you gonna <laughs> I don't no, know. because you said I honestly that it's, don't think there's anything wrong. There's nothing wrong until when that kid is being born. That's when now you start thinking, okay. Until that go to church years on Sunday, old and should he... say I don't want to be Muslim, I don't want to be Christian. I want to of be course, atheist. Do you understand? There's nothing wrong. You give of of course you give her a choice, but she's young. She needs direction. When when a baby is too young, you can't you can't you can't just let the baby be until when you get my point. Because trust me, you, we find again, yeah. But then before she, you get married, before you have a child, she, you should discuss such things. Exactly, but now yeah, of course you should discuss such kind of things. But now this kid, she's gonna go to school. She's gonna find now different class of people, different type of religions in there. So now when he's when when he's being asked what religion are you in? What is she going to say? She has to pick one. So she comes back home and said, Mommy, Daddy, I went to school. They told me which religion I am. I, I froze. You understand? So, I mean, it's, it's just a matter of sitting down and discussing with your wife or husband or whatever. Before marriage, yeah, discuss be, that yes, so that it doesn't bring confusion. Yeah, so that, yeah, true. And try and raise that kid. If you want to put the kid into what they call this, on, on Fridays, go to the mosque. On Sunday, go to church, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it depends on it's how achievable. you. achievable. Yeah, it is achievable. Yeah, but again, you know, there's one thing you can't serve two masters. Uh, as uh, that's what they say, but mm. yeah, that's what they say. But I mean, I, I've known people who they are, they have served even more than <laughs> three, and they're, they're so doing well. So you're taking people from two religions. Mm -hmm. 
are together, married even. You're telling me the wrong share ideas? Of course they share ideas. Mm. I mean, of course they share ideas. The, the thing is, like, okay, we are okay, you know. We don't mind. But what about the kid now? You understand? Mm? What about the kid? We have to think about, okay, we are together like this. So what's up? What's going to happen if these kids are growing up? Let's say we have three kids. You understand? Anyway, those are future problems. Make sure to give yeah. this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in our next reaction video.